right, folks, to the Mel Wright Show. This is episode 174. I've got we've got a great guest here. Um, she's been on one of my other shows. She's a fantastically experienced copywriter. It's Belinda Weaver. Belinda, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? Hello, everyone. Thank you, Jonathan and Robert, for having me. My name is Belinda Weaver. I am a copywriter. My business is Copyright Matters. And at the heart of it, I help copywriters and business owners write copy that makes them money. And I do that with courses and coaching and mentoring. Yes, folks, she teaches the copywriters. So we thought she was the right person to come on the show. And I've got my great co-host with us, Robert Newman. Would you quite quickly like to introduce yourself to the new listeners of yours, Robert? <laughs> sure. I am uh, the master of the real estate marketing universe. I am the founder of a company called Inbound REM and a website by the same name. And you can find all that you need to know about me at inboundrem.com. Just a quick footnote for our listeners. I am no longer taking on clients for 2018. So uh, if you do check me out, it's going to be an informational journey. That's right. That's right. So um, what about you, John? Come on. Well, I'm the founder of <laughs> Mailwright. We're a platform that gets you quality seller leads using the power of Facebook. Um, if that sounds interesting, have a movie on the website. Um, first of all, I just want to say to our new listeners and viewers, thank you for joining us. Last month was our biggest month of downloads, um, which was very encouraging. So thank you for joining us. Um, so, so what's your back? What's a what's your give us a brief um, outline, Belinda? What's your background and how you quickly how you got into the world of copywriting? Sure. Well, I think like many people these days, my career has taken a little bit of a journey. So when I graduated from uni, it was in the world of IT. I started off as a back end mainframe programmer at a bank in Brisbane, Australia. Sorry. Um, after yeah, <laughs> well, I didn't stay there for very long. Um, I ended up in marketing and then that's when I discovered copywriting. So I was working in a marketing role um, a few years into doing marketing and I was looking for a change and I heard about copywriting as a thing I could actually do as a job on my own. I could run my own business um, and that's when I I created Copyright Matters. So I actually worked as a side gig for six months building up my pipeline of leads and my marketing and everything like that. And, and when I was confident that I could take the leap, because I've always been a planner, that's just what I did. Um, and I bagged my current employer as my first retainer client. And that was in 2010. So and I've been doing copywriting ever since. So that was in Australia. I've since lived in England and I've since lived in Australia. So I love copywriting as a very transportable business. That is true. That is true. Got a question, Robert? No, no. <laughs> Just a gesture. Just a flamboyant gesture. Yeah, uh, that's me. You'll get used to it. Uh, okay. You know, I have no, I have no questions. I'm very excited. I'm enthusiastic. I love, I love internet marketing and copywriting as a business that you can do anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've started to exercise, like, like stretch my wings. So when you were saying, oh, it's a transportable business, I'm like, huh. I haven't been to London. I haven't been to Brisbane. I should go to those places. That's yeah. Which is I mean, what, what many of us do is we just create a job that we do from our office at home and that's okay, but the possibilities are there. It's good to know. Right. right. So um, obviously we get a lot of agents and brokers listening to the show and what they're about is getting traffic to their website. Um, have you got, any lessons or tips that you would like to share about get, getting that traffic to your website? Well, I think um, it's easy because traffic is what everyone thinks. If I need more customers, then I need more traffic. Um, and it's not necessarily true because we should be talking about conversions. As long as you're getting high qualified traffic to your website it might be a lower number of people but they stick around for longer robert you were just saying you spent 10 to 15 minutes reading my website so you know i would prefer to get fewer numbers of people to my website and have them stay on the website for longer and have them convert into a customer than bucket loads of traffic that spend five seconds on my website and then bounce off so that's the first thing and i think um 
It's important to consider lead generation and SEO, which is search engine optimization, which is how you get found on Google. I mean, we can talk about other search engines, but Google is the business. Um, when we're talking about lead generation and SEO, we have to think about it as a long term game. It's something I always talk to, to my copywriting students and, and people I'm coaching about marketing being like a big water wheel. Like it takes a lot of effort to get it moving, but once you got it going, the momentum will carry you a long way and you require only a little bit of effort to keep it moving. So you've got to have this mindset that lead generation, getting traffic, search engine optimization, this is all a long-term strategy that you need to be working at all the time. I always say always be marketing. That's what we need to do. We need to make time if we want to generate traffic. We need to make time to be on social media. We need to make time to help people in communities and groups and be generous with our knowledge and experience. We need to make time to create and share valuable content as well. And this is where blogs can really come in and help. They're great for SEO and they're great to give you reasons for people to come to your website. And then when you're doing all these kind of things, you don't have to push the sale because you're pulling people to you. And part of that pull marketing approach is that they are getting to know you, they're getting to like you, they're getting to trust you, and then you're not actually asking for a sale. It's just a natural progression of the relationship taking the next step. Right. So, now, I, I yeah. have a quick, well, okay. So, you have this big client, you're, you're, you've decided you're going to be a copywriter, you get, this, you, get, you get somebody that's hired you. When did you establish Copyright Matters, your own website? What, what year did you make that decision? 2009. I went to a seminar and I found out about copywriting. Within two months, I had registered the business name and then within six months, I had a pipeline of work that I was comfortable enough to quit my day job. So okay. I, I went solo in 2010, but I registered the business in October 2009. And you were already publishing uh, content on your own site during that time frame? I didn't start a blog until 2011, but I was using social media. So this was back in the day when you could just publish some tips and be helpful on social media and clients would just call you up and hire you. <laughs> and it's a little bit harder these days. You've got to put it, you've got to put out a lot more to get it back, but it's worth it. So then when I started my blog, that's when I started seeing traction with SEO because I started getting domain authority by publishing a blog post every week. And the blog post gave me content to share on social media, which drew people back to my website. And then a little later, I started converting the blog post posts into LinkedIn articles. I converted the blog posts into YouTube tutorials. I converted the blog posts into lots of tweets and lots of social media updates. So you have one idea with a blog post that can turn into tons and tons of content if you repurpose it in a smart way. And then you're getting people who like videos. You're getting people who are hanging out on Facebook. You're getting people who like to read your blog. You're getting people at all angles. True, definitely. So for our listeners, uh, because I am in, in, for our podcast, I am the resident inbound marketer, a resident uh, SEO guy. And I did run your website through a tool that I use frequently called uh, AREFs. And one of mm -hmm. my favorite things about it was uh, you have a keyword that you're ranking for called copywriter portfolio, which I would imagine is an extremely high value uh, keyword when you're in the copywriting business. And so you're ranking number three for that. And guys, uh, for those of that are listening, she has four or 5,000 targeted visitors. Um, almost everything that I saw, like SEO copywriting, she's on the first page for number 10. So I'm really super impressed, Belinda, by what you've managed to do using these strategies that, you, um, that you're talking about. You have $8,000 worth of uh, organic traffic. So if you're paying for it, you'd be paying almost 100 grand a year, but you're not. You're just simply... Uh, creating valuable content. So that's the numbers for those people that know that I am a numbers guy. Um, oh, thank you. So, so you've done all this stuff. Uh, what are, what, so obviously I've had, I've had a, a shit show of an experience. I, like I've made a lot of mistakes. I've done everything wrong before I ever did it right. And uh, I'm just that's curious. That's how we learn, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we learn. Did you, 
what what are a couple of your lessons that you learned in the like uh, in terms of traffic generation for your website, or maybe maybe even other lessons? Maybe we we drift away from you know that. And you just say, what are a couple of valuable lessons in your nine years that you've been doing this? Well, I think the big one is don't let perfection stand in the way of progress. Get it done and get it out. A lot of people don't publish a blog because they think, what am I going to say? And then, then they think, well, loads of people have already said this. Or, oh, loads of people are more expert than I am. Well, why would anyone read me? Why would anyone read what I've got to say? And that will stop you starting. So you've got to be able to get over that. I mean, as a copywriter, I'm always fiddling with my copy. For me, that always me- that means introducing typos all the time. Whenever my proofreader finishes proofreading, I put it up there and I think, oh, just make one more change. And that's what <laughs> happens every time. So, you know, I've got to, I've had to tell myself, just get it done. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can tweak it later. And, you know, I always say to my students, writing a blog when you're just starting out is like practicing a speech to an empty room. No one's reading it because you're just starting out. People can't even find you online, but it lets you practice your voice. It lets you practice your writing. You will get better and you've got to start somewhere. And I think real estate is such a, it's a gold mine of topics, you know, going back to what am I going to say? Because a blog is an opportunity and your social media, any way you interact with your clients online is an opportunity for you to educate them and get them ready to work with you. So people start, you know, looking for a house or looking to sell a house and they've got tons of questions. They have no idea what they're doing, but they're not quite ready to trust a person to take it over. Some people are, but what we do, we have these five stages of awareness where we're problem unaware. Then we're, pro- then we're aware we have a problem. Then we're aware that there are some solutions. Then we're aware of specific products or people And then we're most aware and we're ready to take the next step. So, you know, the journey through your website and the content you put out has to be intentionally helping people move to become the most aware they can be so that they're ready to work with you. So there's tons of advice that you can give out and then people think, oh, I can't give away all my knowledge because people might steal it or people (laughs) might go and do it themselves. And that's fine. Yes, some people might do it themselves. But more often than not, in any industry, people go, oh, that's a bit harder than I thought it was going to be. I need some help. And who am I going to get to help me? That cracking person who's been putting out all this awesome content and has been helping because I know them now and I trust them. So, you know, there's so many benefits and there's so many things to say. You've just got to get over your own ego a little bit. And just get started and not let that perfection stand in the way of your progress. All right. Go ahead, John. Yeah, I think another thing, Belinda, I just want to see if you what you think of this is I think with a lot of our agents, it's um, we've been hammering away at this for a while, but it's finding your niche. It's finding either having that niche be geo-based, i.e. you just you become the expert of a specific area in a city or a particular client base, let's say you specialize in retirement, buying a, uh, a retirement home for somebody that's moving down. It doesn't really matter, but finding that niche, it will help enormously with focus and the, about the content that you should be writing for your blog. What do mm. you think about that? Oh, absolutely. And it applies, I mean, it applies for copywriters, it applies for a lot of industries. Um, when you can share a niche when you can dig div dig deep when you can dig deeply (laughs) um, (laughs) what you'll find is uh, being a generalist is totally okay but people will pay extra for specialist skills and it will help you stand apart from the market so being a generalist is okay but as people will pay extra for specialist skills and you know i mean i have a friend uh who's just come out as come out as a real estate agent that sounds 
a bit strange, but it's true. She admitted it to us all and we forgave her and we're still <laughs> friends. Um, but what she, what an angle she's using is she's a generalist, but she is using her experience in Silicon Valley, the fact that she's lived here her whole life as an angle to differentiate herself. Right. So it might not be a, a niche in terms of a type of property, but if you can find a part of you and your business to shine a spotlight on, it will help differentiate you in the market. So she's basically saying, I've lived here my whole life. I know everything about this area and I can help you and your family get the most of living in Silicon Valley. It's not just about a house. It's about a home and all the fun you're going to have here. So she's using that to help differentiate her from other real estate agents in the market here. And that is probably a good time to go to break, John. Yes, it's probably a good time. We're going to go for our break, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll be delving in this really important world of copywriting. And um, we'll be back in a few moments, folks. We've had a fun time with Belinda. She knows her stuff. Uh, um, she, Robert has searched and um, found out that she really knows her stuff. So we've been having a really great conversation about copywriting. So... Um, what's the difference between, uh, I've hired copywriters myself and, um, I also think a lot of people, um, think, well, I, I, I was fantastic at school. I, I've, I was fantastic at college. I can write my own copy. And when you, when they try and write copy for their website, for their blog, it doesn't work out very well because they don't realize there's differences. First, do you agree with that? And what are the differences and what are the things, the tips or the insights you can give about writing on your blog and on a website in general? Um, firstly, I absolutely agree with it. There's something very funny that happens to 99% of the population that we sit down to write something that we think is important and we're transported back to our high school English essays that are going to get graded and needed a certain structure and needed a voice. And that's why, you know, working... I've got cold sweat now. You, you... <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Get a bit worked up, Belinda. You bring really back bad memories. <laughs> a lot of clients sort of worry that their copy will sound too casual, but this is exactly what we need our copy to do in this online and modern marketing. Because when marketing marketing copy is too aggressive, it sets off our amygdala in our brain. That is the part of our brain that warns us that we are in danger. So when your marketing is too aggressive, people instinctively will back off. But when your marketing has a more conversational tone, and if you just Google conversational copywriting, this is a thing and it's just part of modern marketing and copywriting these days where your copy is a conversation that you are not there for. So you need to sound like it's a great conversation to be a part of. And a lot of people worry that their copy isn't going to sound professional, using air quotes, if it sounds like they speak. But when you're an awesome real estate agent and you're a professional salesperson, you, you don't use slang and super casual language unless you pick it as the right tone of voice. More often than not, you're friendly, you're charming, you're informative, and you're persuasive. But you're still conversational with a human right in front of you. So my biggest tip is to kind of, is to write how you speak and then send it to a proofreader or an editor to maybe tighten it up a little bit. But that's the thing. We need to speak. Your blogs are, are a fantastically informal way to impart your knowledge and experience. You should make them conversational. You should make them sound like you're speaking to one person and same with your website copywriting. So everyone needs to just kind of loosen it up. Think about who their ideal client is. Imagine they're right in front of them. And if it helps, pull out a dictaphone. Dictaphone, what am I talking about? Pull out your iPhone and record <laughs> yourself talking to that person right in front of you. Because when people get talking, and I find this when I take briefs from clients, they fill out the brief and they type it and it's fine, but then I get them on the phone and that's when I get the gold. Right, yeah. When you're talking to a person, you explain things in a way that is natural and persuasive 
and heavens for fend interesting and that's what you need your copy to do right yeah i think robert's writing some copy right now actually i am writing some copy because <laughs> i discovered that unfortunately this thing didn't post correctly to my facebook page and i really wanted it to so i oh, had to right. go back and redo the damn thing so that uh, people can see the He's got a very see the pictures summer. with the talkie talkie. Yeah, my my one person that logs in. Actually, I do have one person that logs in for my live thing. She's a friend of mine, and she's she's sitting in a real estate office here in Los Angeles. I guarantee you, getting ready to critique me. <laughs> she's oftentimes instant messaging me in real time, going, "Hey, Robert, I can see your cat." Oh, <laughs> Thank the you. Cats, the cat. <laughs> right. So, um, I'm. Just, I think the other thing is um, they do, they just don't break it up um, the copy in digestible little bits. Mm. Go into a bit about why having headers and subheaders and breaking it up is important, and why reading on the screen is a bit different than reading a book. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Robert, when we we're talking before the show, you said you normally spend, you know three seconds or 30 seconds, you know, reading a website and then you're off and you know, 30 seconds is, is a long time, you know, feedback. If you look at any kind of modern stats, people send, spend less than 10 seconds on a website. So they get on a website and they're saying, is this, um, is this solution to the problem that I'm searching about? Um, do I like what I see? Can I find what I see? So the place that you drop people off at, and when you're looking at traffic generation strategies, most people just dump traffic at their homepage. And if you're going to do that, your homepage needs to be on point. It needs to say, this, you are in the right place. This is where you're going to find the solution to your problem. This is what I'm about, and you can trust me. And you need to get that all across in about eight seconds. To be honest, I'm at a five-second mark. I'm just like, one, two, three, four, five, I'm out. But if you're looking at traffic generation strategies, you need to consider maybe dropping them off at the page that is really relevant to the offer that you're making and offer, you know, to the, to what they're searching for. But that said, when you, when they are reading your copy, people are jumping around. So this is where headings and subheadings are absolutely critical because I'm spending a couple of my precious eight to 10 seconds quickly scrolling up and down the page, reading the subheadings and the headlines to get an understanding of what this content is about. Don't waste, I'm not going to waste my time reading anything until I'm pretty sure it's going to deliver. So you've got to have good headlines and good subheads, subheads that draw people in. And then you need to avoid having huge walls of copy because it's kind of, I, I like to say it's like having a huge plate of food. It can be, it's just a bit overwhelming. You don't quite know where to begin. So, you know, you just tap out. That's when you need to have one idea per paragraph. Uh, I say no more than four or five lines per paragraph. One sentence paragraphs, even one word paragraphs, absolutely a thing and can be super effective to draw people into reading the next line. And I talk about it in terms of you've got to let the, your copy breathe especially if it's a long article. So subheadings, white space between paragraphs, bullet points, all these kind of things. And then you can highlight phrases that you want to pop out from the page in bold. And that can help just draw the eye. And, you know, if you're thinking about how to do this, think about how you move around website content. What are you looking at? It's a, as you were saying, that it's a, it's very similar to basic um, design principles, isn't it? That white space, you know, in graphic design, um, you learn more is less. Really, you know, having a lot of white space, bold colours to emphasise something, spacing. Yeah. Um, you, when people into graphic design, they tend to throw in the kitchen sink, um, and somebody that's a bit more experienced learns that, you know emphasis is through white space and they're in some ways the i've got the impression that's a similar situation to good copy writing yeah. absolutely when it when it comes to a copywriting process the more experienced you get the more time you spend on editing so the better you are the more you take out i was intrigued um, that somebody of your experience has a proofreader and editor even oh, now yes can you go maybe um, um, why that 
is so important and why you still do that basically um i do it because i'm a terrible proofreader proofreading your own copy is really hard <laughs> because more often than not you have read the same bit of copy over and over and over again so your brain is auto correcting the mistakes and that's what i do so all my client copy definitely goes to a proofreader. Um, you know, there are tools that you can use like Grammarly that will proofread stuff as you write online. Super helpful, but I still like to send it to a proofreader to make sure it's all correct. Even though my writing has a very casual tone of voice, I still like to make sure it's correct, that there's not any weird typos, you know, that you meant two double O and you put two Grammarly doesn't check that. doesn't pick that up. Um, do the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. And when it comes to an editor, you know, sometimes it's just fantastic to get fresh eyes. So, you know, when I was writing my courses or I'm creating content that is really important, I'll send it to an editor slash proofreader just to have that really fresh face where she'll go, your meaning's not exactly clear here, you know, and things like that. And it's about perspective. You need to be able to step back. And if you don't want to outsource it, then you need to be able to leave enough time between writing and editing and publishing to reset your brain. That's great. <laughs> You're brilliant. I love this. Hey, we're at the, uh, we're at the end, but can I suggest, Sean, that we do a couple of minutes of um, bonus. bonus content and yeah, say sure. that, uh, that we're going to focus on uh, – um, uh, how I like uh, we we want to do an exercise for the bonus content where we make you pretend that you're going to be a real estate agent and and what would your strategy be as, as a copywriter in in that in that one example are you are you game yeah. for that Belinda absolutely let's right. do it right. let's, let's we're going to gonna do that we're going to do yeah. that in the bonus content folks which you'll be able to watch and listen to on the Mel Wright YouTube channel or on the Mel Wright website with a full set of show notes and other information related to this interview belinda um thank you so much for coming on the podcast um it's My been pleasure. a pleasure again it's always great fun having you on the show um or shows um how can people get hold find out more about you your wisdom and just indulge in your great writing <laughs> Well, my website is my home base. Um, so it, that's copyrightmatters.com. And that has links to social. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn way too much. But if you go to my website, there's actually tons of free content. I have a free copywriting mini course. And I also have, you know, things like you can book um, consultations with me. You can pick my brain. They're called pick my brain sessions. And I have other kind of products on offer. But there's tons of free content on my blog. I also have a daily copywriting email people might be interested in called the daily draft very very short copywriting tips delivered every weekday and i, I couldn't more recommend belinda if i tried um i think she's a great person and she really knows the stuff so if you're looking for some good advice on copywriter go to belinda's site robert how can people find out more about you and what you're up to they can always check me out on inboundrem.com. Belinda, I wish that I had taken the time to repurpose my content for all these other channels, but I have not been the greatest at doing that. So you got to just go to inboundrem.com and you'll find me, find all my, my stuff there. Check out the podcast. Hey, there's a thought. That's that. And the same, um, if you are interested in MailRite and want more information, go to the MailRite site. All the episodes are on the MailRite website. It's really a, a mini university course in its own way. All the experts over the past two years that I've interviewed around real estate. We'll be back next week, folks, with our expert giving insight that will help you be a more successful real estate agent, not only for yourself, but for your family. And um, we'll see you soon, folks. Bye. Right then, Robert, let's try a little game with uh, Belinda then. Yeah. All right. So to reintroduce our audience, guys, we're going to do an exercise. Belinda is going to pretend that she is a real estate agent. She's getting into real estate uh, for the first time. She's brand new, but she has her copywriting skills. She is a master copywriter. So Belinda, how do you go about promoting your brand new real estate business? The first thing I do is I'd start a blog. 
So I would break down, I would, I would get a huge piece of paper and I would start writing down blog topics and blog topics are questions that I think people will ask or have asked me problems that I think people are facing when they're either buying or selling a house. And I would get more and more granular and you could literally come up with hundreds of blog topic ideas. Now the whole purpose of a blog is to educate your clients so that they are ready to work with you or me. So that's the whole point of the blog. Right. So I would come up with a blog. I would start writing because I know a blog is a fantastic way to build trust. It also gives me content to share on social media. So I'd start a blog. I would create my social media profiles um, and recognize that your website is your home base. Social media is rented property. So social media is a fantastic way to draw people to your home base, but never invest everything in social media. Um, I would definitely make sure I had mobile friendly content. This is a huge thing. I mean, Google really penalizes websites and content nowadays. that isn't mobile friendly, but everyone is looking for stuff on their phone. And when they're looking for houses, they're out and about. So they're looking for more content on their phone. So I would definitely make sure everything is mobile friendly. I would start sharing um, the blog content I'm writing and basically sharing as many tips as I could from the blog content. So one, I, I talked about repurposing content. One blog could be yield 10 to 15 small little tips. I would start being very generous with my knowledge and experience to help customers find their dream home. The more you give, the more people will trust you. I would also not just be pushing out on social media. I would be looking for groups and communities to participate in because when you become that helpful real estate person who answered my question or gave me some advice that I, you know, didn't ask for, but was super helpful, you're front of mind. So I would be looking for Facebook groups, Facebook communities, LinkedIn groups, anywhere my audience is hanging out. And this is where I'd be creative. Because people looking for houses might be hanging out in mums groups or other kind of social groups. Reddit so and Quora. I'm going to add something in here because I do know where some of them are hanging out. Reddit and Quora. Just, just, but please continue. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So know where people are hanging out, asking questions about real estate and get in there. So I would make a little bit of time every day to go and answer some questions with as much information and detail as I could. I wouldn't hold anything back. It's very much having that I got to put out to get back, which sounds a bit rude, but it's absolutely. <laughs> and you know, real estate keywords are obviously going to be super competitive, but when I'm writing blog content that's helpful and useful, and I'm using keywords, so it's worth doing some investigation into the types of keywords that people are using online and putting them in your blog post, your website will start to get more credibility in Google's eyes. So they're the things I would start with. And then I'd also start thinking about how can I make it easier for people to buy from me or book me for their services? And it might be things like, well, I'm going to do a video walkthrough of the house. So people don't just have pictures. You know, you've got to be able to put yourself in the mindset of the people you want to book you and say, well, how can I make their life easier? What is it that they're looking for? And what is the traditional setup not delivering? Because any way that you can bust out of what everyone else is doing, you're instantly going to set yourself apart. So that's what I'd be trying to think of doing. And technology offers a fantastic opportunity to do that. Beautiful. I thank you so much. I love, okay. I love everything you said. I have no <laughs> questions. Uh, John, you're usually really good at, at posing stuff, but I'm, I am, I am, I full throatedly endorse everything that Belinda just said. Awesome. We are speaking the same language. Yes. Definitely. So, so, um, you do that, Belinda, but obviously you want, as a real estate agent, you want to get people on a, some form of database, some form of list. Yes. So um, how, got any advice about how you, you can encourage people to give their name and email when they're going to that blog? What is a good 
mythologies if you're in that real estate mindset what would be maybe some offerings you could give that are not too cheesy or too aggressive that would encourage people to leave their name and address their name and email that's a great point jonathan so i develop a lead magnet and and basically that's an incentive for people to sign up to your thing um and it could be i mean this is just prime it's it's going to sound a bit cheesy but People are looking for tips to help them buy or sell a house. So compile a report that has some stats in it. Use facts and statistics to give yourself some credibility and then give them tips. That is a great way to just open the door to your knowledge and experience. So create something that's nicely designed. You know, the 10 best ways you can prepare your house for sale. That sounds like a cliche, but you know what? That's the kind of thing people want to learn. Or the uh, top 10 secrets of real estates to help you find your dream home. You know, things that you don't know about house positioning that will change the way you buy your house. You know, these are kind of things that make people go, oh, oh, I didn't know that. I think I need to know that. And that's a way in. So a lead magnet is a really good idea, um, a really good way to get people to give you their email. And once you have their email, they're effectively people, you know, we give companies permission to sell to us when we give them our email. But you do have to tread lightly. And I think a good rule is 80% share, like give 80% with 20% sales. If you bang in with 100% sales, people are going to go, whoa, 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 whoa. That amygdala is going to go, no, 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 back off back off you know so you need to be keeping generous and and friendly and and share your knowledge and experience i mean one technique i i heard of recently i was at a copywriting conference and we were talking about the power of following up and one of the examples this copywriter gave is how um they sent postcards out they basically it was a spray and pray marketing tactic of postcards you know, are you looking to buy? Are you looking to sell? I don't know if it was combined on one postcard, but any lead they got back, any inquiry, um, if that inquiry didn't go anywhere, they put the inquiry, the details into a spreadsheet or a database of some kind, and then they regularly followed up with that person and just asked one simple question. Are you still looking to buy a house or are you still looking to sell a house, sell your house? That one simple question and the process of actually following up with people yielded fantastic results. It was quite astounding. So when you have a database of people, whether it's just from your list building with your blog, you are allowed to sell to them. You do want to share and you do want to be awesome, but you are allowed to show, share with them um, your services. Let them know how to buy from you alongside educating them on how to work with you. And then when you run specific campaigns, like you have properties to sell or you're looking to generate specific leads for buyers, follow up with people. Don't get icky. I mean, I'm sure real estate agents are not icky about getting on the phone. A lot of people are icky about getting on the phone. But you can ask them a simple question. Are you still looking to buy a house? Are you still looking to sell a house? All right. Um, another thing comes into my mind as you're speaking, as you're building this blog, website, whatever you want to call it, um, is it as you build it out and you do that first lead magnet, it comes to my thing, you could build different sections out with different messages for people as you expressed at the beginning of this conversation. People are in, I think you said five paths five areas you know stages of awareness stages, stages yeah. of awareness so um as you get a bit more experience it's probably a good idea to build out different sections aimed at different parts of these stages yeah of? absolutely when you're designing your website and this is where we start getting into the nitty-gritty of marketing when you're talking about your funnel. So get up in people's funnels. And basically, we're talking about the journey that people take through your marketing. So if you have a beginner's level lead generate, like a, a lead magnet on your website, and you probably have one for buyers and one for sellers because they're two different audiences, um, then 
you might say, okay, I've drawn them in. Now I need to give them slightly more advanced content to move them to the next level. And then as they go through the journey of your content, they need slightly more and more customized content for where they are as they become more product aware about you you know they're working through the frustrations of having the problem then they're becoming aware that there are general solutions so you have to change the information you send them and then they're becoming aware that you actually have a product because you're a real estate agent and then they're becoming more aware of you so yes the information and that you send them does adapt and evolve over the time, over that journey. And even if you're just planning the information architecture of your website, you have to think about how someone is clicking through. What journey are they taking? What problem have they arrived with? And how clear are the signposts to help them find the next thing that they need to find? I think that's great. Got a question, Robert? None. No, no. I actually agree with I agree with uh, all the things that she said. I agree about the funnels. Um, I, I'm just going to say these are, so, she started to touch on extremely advanced marketing topics, which I think is a little bit beyond where I'd say 85% of our particular audiences. Uh, the first part of the conversation is brilliant. My advice is don't let the complexities of marketing slow you down as Absolutely. she was saying early, early on. Here's the general concept. When you start marketing and you have some success, maybe you're 10 or 20% effective, which is what I've done with my website. And you know what? Oftentimes that 10 or 20%, that's enough to get a business going. That's enough to maybe even produce more sales than you're even capable of handling at that particular stage of the business. Absolutely. Where you start talking about advanced stuff is when you've already built a result and the result is there. And now you're like, okay, how do I refine the result, improve upon the result? And that's when you improve upon your information, which is what yep. you're calling a funnel. That's, Absolutely. So you just keep progressing. And if you're selling these services, you do the same for your clients. You're starting off coaching them in your case to like with a base result. And if they do well at that, you still have someplace else to go because you're like, all right, we've got a good result. Let's make good great and then yeah. great exceptional. Absolutely. Um, and it's very easy for us all to compare our, our backstage, like what we're working on and what we still need to do and what we're trying to achieve with other people's front stage. And that's when we get into imposter syndrome. We're like, oh my God, they've got videos and they've got this and they're doing this and, they're, um, and I'm not doing any of that. Start with one thing and nail it. Start with a blog or start with a Facebook page. Get it happening get it ticking, nail it, and then diversify. Don't try and jump in and go, oh, I've got to do a video and I've got to do this and I've got to be tweeting and, you know, it all comes back to offering exceptional service. So just start with one thing, nail it, and then make it more complex or diversify. Um, funny enough, you mentioned video. Just one last question, then we wrap it up. And thanks so much for your knowledge, Belinda. Um, you know, a lot of people say video, video is a big thing and me and Robert agree with it. But I think combining video with, with, with good copy is really um, where you get the best results of all worlds. But um, have you got any, I don't know if you've been thinking about this yourself or if you listen to other experts about what's the best way of using video with copy? Well, one of the things to consider with video is... Um, and copy, people, some people prefer to watch videos. Some people prefer to avoid videos. I create videos, but I hate videos. I don't watch videos. Like if I'm on a website, I will read all the copy and then I'll watch the video last just to make sure there's nothing that I've, that is not in the copy. So you have to be attuned to the different ways that people want to consume your message and you have to consider that. Um, that's probably the main thing. I think anything that you have in the video, you should have in the copy and everything you have in the copy should also be in the video. You, just in case one person watches and doesn't read or one person reads and doesn't watch. That's a great advice. Thank you so much, Belinda, for sharing your wisdom with us My this pleasure. morning. It's been a pleasure viewing again. We'll be back next week, folks, with another great expert like Belinda. We'll see you soon, folks. Bye. <laughs>